encouragement, Lord. Maybe it just uh, maybe they just need to come clean with you tonight, Lord Father. Whatever the case may be, Lord Father, I just want you to uh, touch us, Lord Father. I pray we could uh, say, uh, search us, Lord Father, that they are cry tonight and see if there be any wicked way in us, Lord Father, that you need to deal with and we might have uh, fellowship with you, Lord, in a deeper way. So God, just thank you for the folks that have come out. God, I pray they leave blessed, encouraged, Lord, in your word, through the preaching. God, be with Brother Harold, Lord Father. I just pray for that. Uh, just anoint him to preach, Lord. I pray for Sister Debbie, that you would just anoint her back there with those young folks, Lord Father, that would just be a difference maker in their lives. So that they would stick with them, Lord Father. So we just thank you for what you're going to do. And everything we give you the praise. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I want you to grab your hymn books if you would, and please stand. Turn to number 169. Number 169 in your hymn book will be singing Power in the Blood, Brother Dave's going to come up here.
blessing. Uh, singing the Lord's choirs, done that song several times. Not no better than that tonight. There's a sweet spirit in here. Thank y'all for that. Appreciate you being here. And so our special music uh, tonight is, uh, well, it goes without saying, it's uh, Andy and uh, Cooper, uh, or Cooper and Andy, which is, or Candy. <laughs> so anyway, y'all come on, give them a hand. Daily refreshment for the thirsty soul. And the 
These are quotes from the old devotional writers, pretty much, and uh, a few, few newer ones, but uh, good stuff, thematically arranged for every day of the year. Excellent little tool right there to set your heart on fire. Then here's what we're going to call extraordinary strength and adversity. Everybody we know that's doing anything is having a hard time. <laughs> I mean, something ain't going right. Extraordinary strength in adversity. So here's 24 chapters of things that kind of helped me as we went through a little pit experience. How many know that in life you're running into some pits? They may be anything to mountaintop all the time. It's not that way with me. I wish it was, but uh, thank God for the mountaintops. But uh, how do you make it in the valleys? Well, here, extraordinary strength and adversity might be a help to you. All right, tonight, <clears throat> tonight we're going to talk about the protocol for prayer. The protocol for prayer. Now, this is not so much preaching, but uh, hopefully some teaching and some instruction and some uh, application for us this evening. Every environment you enter requires a protocol. Every environment you enter requires a protocol. There's a protocol required to meet the King of England, uh, the Queen of England. You don't just go running in there and backslapping and carrying on. There's a protocol. There's a protocol to enter the Oval Office. I mean, you think there ought to be a protocol of respect for the President of the United States. Amen. There should be. <laughs> should be. Uh, there's a protocol when soldiers salute their commanders. Dignity is required to meet dignitaries. Uh, the way you approach a fisherman on the riverbank is a whole lot different than how you would approach royalty. I said there's a protocol required for every environment you meet. And there's a protocol to enter the presence of God. You don't enter the presence of God without respect and without honor. So, <clears throat> I want to talk to you tonight about five things necessary to enter the presence of God. Well, when I thought about a protocol, I thought about a procedure. I thought about a modus operandi, a mode of operation. I thought about a code of behavior. Uh, we're talking about proprieties. Uh, we're talking about a protocol. There's a protocol required to enter every environment. So what is the protocol for prayer? Does the Bible say anything about how to approach the Lord? I think it says lots of things. So look in Psalm 100, first of all. Uh, there are many laws of protocol in the Bible. And this is what I'm calling the gratitude protocol. The gratitude protocol. Psalm 100. Your initial pro approach to God, toward heaven, must always be with gratitude. Now look at Psalm 100 right here. Psalm 100. In fact, stand your feet. We'll read it out loud together. Shall we do that? Psalm 100. Uh, all, everybody out loud together now. Verses 1 through 5. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, He is God. It is He that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are His people, and the sheep of His pasture. Enter into His gates with thanksgiving, and into His courts with praise. Be thankful unto Him, and bless His name. For the Lord is good, His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endureth to all generations. Father, thank You tonight for these simple instructions on how to approach Yourself, a holy God. Thank You for these biblical protocols. God, instruct us tonight to approach you the way you deserve. We give you praise with anticipation because we ask in Christ's name. All God's people say it as you're saying. Go ahead and receive it. Enter into his gates with what? Thanksgiving. What are the gates? The gates are the doors. It's the entranceway into the presence of the Lord. And we're to come before his presence with thanksgiving. We approach the Lord with thanksgiving. Somebody said, you can take things for granted, or you can take things with gratitude, but you can't take them both ways. Yeah. You can take things for granted, or you can take things with gratitude, but you can't take them both ways. Don't get so busy adding up your troubles that you forget to count your blessings. Amen. We're all going through adversity of some sort, okay? But in the middle of all of that, buddy, you better, you better not lose your praise. I mean, you better, you better keep on giving thanks always for all things. And you don't thank God because everything is good. You thank God because He's good in Him. It says in Psalm 116, I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving. Now God gives and forgives. And when God gives and forgives, we should give thanks. When God gives you something, thank you. When God forgives you for something, thank you. Now, you need to consider your present condition in light 
your present position in light of your former condition. I, I said you ought to consider your present position in Christ perfect in light of your former condition. So you not only need to give thanks for the sins that you've, you, you, uh, you have confessed, you, you need to thank God for the sins you didn't commit. Now, you might have done bad, but you could have done a whole lot worse. I said, you might have done bad, but buddy, you could have done a whole lot worse than what you did. Thank God for restraining grace. Amen? Amen. Now, what you did is insignificant compared to what you could have done. And sometimes you gotta, you got to go into a quarantine of Thanksgiving. Uh, one time a guy said to me, he said, I want you to go three days and not ask God for anything. I said, why? He said, I want you to go three days and not ask God for anything. I said, you don't want me to pray? He said, oh yeah, I want you to pray. But he said, I only want you to thank. I don't want you to ask for a single thing for three days. I thought that was strange. So I gave it a word. And buddy, I began to thank God for my blessings. Well, I, I was on that for a long time. Then I began to thank God for my problems. And I found out if you'll thank God for blessings and problems, you'll never run out of material to thank God about. <laughs> You say, well, what if you need, need something? Well, go ahead and thank God for it before you get it. Right. That's what faith is anyhow. Thanking God is the first step of faith. Yeah. So, so I went three days and I didn't ask for a single thing, brother. Now, now I'm not, it, we, it's, not, it's not wrong to ask. I'm just telling you, I was so self-centered. This helped me. And after three days, I realized, man, I was blessed a whole lot better than I thought I was. I was richer than I thought I was. I was more fortunate than I ever dreamed I was. And sometimes you got to... I just go on a little season quarantining yourself to Thanksgiving. Now, Thanksgiving is always in season. And I want to tell you, when you can't pray, does anybody here ever get so overwhelmed and so baffled and so uh, bent out of shape and hardly knowing what to think that you can't? you ever get like that? Does anybody else ever get like that? Yeah. I give you a little tip. When you get in a situation where you don't know how to pray, you don't know what to say, you just don't, you don't even, you can't even pray, I'll give you a little tip. I live out in the country. I went to the pastor's house, but he's out in the country. And uh, I'll tell you a good thing about being out in the country. Is you just do about anything you want to and nobody knows anything about it. <laughs> and sometimes I get in the driveway from my house going down to our office when I can't pray. And here's what I do. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm just out there having a big time. And you do, you try that on for about 10 or 15 minutes, buddy. And I'll tell you what, your emotions will catch up with you some of them somewhere on down the highway right there. I'm just telling you. Yeah. Uh, the quarantine of Thanksgiving. Giving God thanks in all things. Now, listen. Uh, gratitude to God makes even a temporal blessing, a temporal blessing, a taste of heaven. Now, St. Neil Strait said, He who forgets the language of gratitude can never be on speaking terms with happiness. I want to tell you that ungrateful people are not happy people. And thankful people tend to be happy people. You say, well, I lost a lot. Thank God for what you got left. Amen. Oh, you get the more you're going to lose. Missing parts. Broken parts. Replacement parts. Defective parts. I mean, I want you to take a survey. There's more titanium in the room right here than uh, you can shake a stick at. I'm just, I'm just telling you. Uh, so now mind what you got. Oh, thank God for what have you got left. Right. Now here's what you want to do. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to, we're going to implement, preacher, all right? Pull out your little, pen, little booklet right there. Turn to page 15. Turn out your, pull out your little booklet, page number 15. Anybody not have a booklet? Put your hand. We've got some ushers here. All right, we need some ushers. We need some speedy ushers. <laughs> That's right. Keep bring it going. Right back there, man. <laughs> All right, now, we'll turn to page 15. We're going to talk about the top 100 list. Top 100 list. The gratitude protocol. We're to approach the Lord with thanksgiving. They, they've all left the building. They, they've, all, they've all gone out the door. They're out there looking for these things. Uh, let's say thank you, Lord, for saving my soul while we're waiting. All right, here we go. Thank you, Lord. Fellas, if you don't have them, we'll, we'll make it out. Pull out a sheet.
sheet of paper and a pen, all right? Top 100 list. If you have, if you have it, you have it in front of you. And here's some categories of things that we can be, give God thanks for. I was in a church service one time, and the pastor said, uh, I want you to go home and, and make your top 100 list. And then he said, I want you to write down the top 100 things that you're thankful to God about. I thought, hey, that's a good idea. So, uh, so my wife and I got in the car, we're driving home. Twelve minutes later, we had 117 things on our top 100 plus list of things we're thankful to God about. Come back to church the next night. Pastor said, uh, how many completed your top 100 list? And some people said, Pastor, we couldn't think of 100 things. Well, you know what that meant? They're not in the habit of giving things. Because if you're in the habit of giving things, you reel off 100 things pretty quick. So let's, let's do 15 of them right now. I want you to take out a pen, piece of paper. If you don't have your booklet, uh, then uh, just pull, pull out a sheet of paper somewhere and, and write down things that you're thankful to God about. This is for you. This is for you. Pull out a pen. If you don't have a pen, find a woman with a big purse. Uh, she's loaded up with pens and pencils and half of them don't work. But, but uh, get you a piece of paper and a pen. Now, we, we, on this uh, sheet right here, we even have some uh, categories. Uh, thankful for churches and ministries. Thankful for challenges. Uh, page 14. Thankful for things about God. For His mercy. For His patience. For His kindness. For His gentleness. Just write down things you're thankful to. About your family. Things you're thankful for. For friends. Boy, friends are a blessing. Spiritual benefits. Physical blessings. Material provisions. Go ahead. Write and think about... about uh, uh, 40 seconds, write down as many things as you can think of that you're thankful for God, to God about. All right? Enumerate the things you're thankful for. Enter into His gates with thanksgiving. Let me encourage you tonight, as a, as a couple, as a family, as an individual, before you go to bed, complete your top 100 list. Write down at least 100 things you're thankful to God about. You're better off than you think you are, I'm just telling you. And uh, sometimes we get so cluttered with negativity, we can't see the blessing. So we've got to count our blessings, and this will help us to do this. So I would encourage you to do this. Now, how many wrote down some things? Lift, you, lift up your hand or your book. Let my guess if you wrote down some stuff. Go ahead. Lift. It's hot up here. Go ahead and do some discipline. All right. <laughs> now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to thank God for what we wrote down. Bow your head, bow your head, bow your heart, and just call out and thank God for the things you wrote down. Just express your gratitude to God. Prayer is verbal communication from man to God. Just spend a few, few moments here thanking God. The gratitude protocol. Coming into his gates with thanksgiving. Thank you for loading us down with benefits. God, thank you for the blessings of life. Thank you for the challenges of life. Thank you for the grace of God, the goodness of God, the patience of God, the mercy of God. Thank you, Lord, for being so kind, so gentle, so long-suffering, so forbearing. Lord, thank you. Thank you for our friends. God, thank you for our families. God, thank you for our church. God, thank you for so many things. Father, we just want to give you praise and teach us, oh God, to be a grateful people and enter your gates every day with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. All right. The gratitude protocol. Protocol number two we're going to talk about tonight is the cleansing protocol. Look in Psalms 24. Just flip back. Hold, hold that place right there. We'll look back to Psalm chapter uh, 24 and verse 3. The cleansing protocol. Psalm 24, verse 3. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? Who's going to stand in the presence of God? Look at verse 4. He that has what? He that has what? And a what? 
clean hands and a pure heart, he hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. The word clean here means innocent. Thanks, fellas. Appreciate your help. I'm sorry for swinging that on you. So if you, you need a booklet, just hold your hand up. These, these, these guys have got it. We appreciate that so very, very much. The word clean means innocent, spotless, guiltless. Uh, 2 Peter says, Be diligent that you may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. The clean protocol. Tozer said, when God declares a man righteous, he instantly sets about to make that man righteous. <laughs> that is the clean protocol. Now, clean hands. Not cleaner, but clean. What can wash away my sins? <laughs> Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Not cleaner, but clean. Not improved, but clean. Not sanitized, but spotless. I grew up in Southside Virginia on a tobacco farm. And uh, how many of you are thankful you don't have to work on a tobacco farm? Shout hallelujah. <laughs> oh, God, very stinky, that's how I'm telling you. You know, we get out there and we uh, pull them. We call it pulling. Is that what y'all call it down there? It's really picking, but we call it pulling. Right? So you bend over, you know, you get those leaves, man. You put them up under your arm. You go down the road, you know. And, and uh, then you go put it in the trailer or the slide. Take it off to the barn. They spring it up. And, you know, when it gets around 10 o'clock, the dude's gone. It's hot. Get around noon, about 90 degrees. Around 3 o'clock, about 95 degrees. And uh, we didn't have much sense, so we always wore short sleeve shirts. Oh, the was really stupid. And the uh, tar, the tar, some of y'all know what I'm talking about, would get all the hairs on your arm. And by the end of the day, about 12 hours into it, it'd be about that thing. Yeah. What a mess. And, uh, and then at the end of the day, when we finally got to the house, we had lava soap. Pumice. I mean, you know what I'm talking about? Lava and soap, you know, with that grit in it. Then we had to scrub that. And it would take 45 minutes. Scrub it. And to wash that tar off, I mean, it took about 45 minutes. And then after we finished, the nicotine had stained us yellow. We thought we had jaundice or something. And, uh, but, but, you know, after 45 minutes and, and getting clean, felt really good. It felt really, really good. And I want to tell you, it's good to get clean in the presence of God and to have a conscience void of offense toward God and, uh, and man. I, I'm just telling you, the blood of Jesus cleanses from all unrighteousness. It's the clean protocol. You know why we can't pray sometimes? Because we're not clean. It blocks our fellowship with God. Listen to this. He bore our sin that we might have His righteousness. He took our guilt that we might have His grace. He took our shame that we might have His smile. He took our punishment, that we might have His pardon. He took our death, that we might have His life. And He took our penalty, that we might have His peace. The blood of Jesus cleanses from all unrighteousness. Not coming in prayer, we've got to learn the power of the blood. I'll tell you what's wrong with them. A lot of churches, they never learned the power of the blood. Old Peter, you know, he messed up who denied the Lord three times, had a problem with his language, was going to go back to fishing. <laughs> what a mess he was in. And uh, he with the other uh, disciples spent ten days in the upper room, and it took him ten days to get sorted out. Now I'm telling you, when they, got, when they, when they came out of that upper room, they were clean, brother. Yeah. Oh, Peter stood up there at Pentecost. He preached with boldness. You who crucified the Son of God. He forgot all about his denial. He had forgotten all about his failure. He forgot all about his messing up. I'm telling you, he learned the power of the blood. And you've got to learn the power of the blood as a child of God if you're going to walk with the Lord. Yeah. Now Samuel Brindle said, Righteousness is conformity to the divine law, but holiness is conformity to the divine nature. And I'm telling you, the blood puts you right with God. Not trying harder, not doing better, not rededicating, not reconsecrating, not promise keeping. And if, that, if you're still on that, you're a hundred miles from victory. I'm just here to tell you, you've got to learn the power of the blood. You say, well, how do you get, how do you, how do you get clean? You get clean by coming clean. If we confess our sins, confess means to say the same thing that God says about our sin. In other words, to call sin, sin, to agree with God. Now, listen, you confess your sin one time. Never confess the same sin twice. Because if you confess it twice, 
It means you don't believe that God forgave you the first time, even though He said, if we confess our sin, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. You know, we need to quit acting like Catholics. Go ahead and say amen on that point. Are you all with me on this right here? I'm serious as I can be. You say, well, I feel so bad when I've lost my temper. I feel so bad when I forgive wake of my besetting sin. It don't make any difference how bad you feel. If your heart convinced you God's greater than your heart, quit living out of your emotions and believe the Word of God and start thanking God once you confess your sins. Amen. This will help you. I'm, I'm just telling you, this will help you. Now, immediately begin to thank God. Now, and how do you get clean? Well, he that covers his sin, he that uh, conceals, hides his sins, he's not going to prosper. But whosoever confesses and forsakes will have mercy. Let me tell you how to, how to, how to get, get, get it right. Admit it, quit it, forget it. Amen. Say that out loud. Admit it, quit it, forget it. He that covereth his sins, he's not going anywhere, but whoever confesses, admits. And forsakes, quits, shall have mercy. Forgets. Now when God forgets you, He forgets it. That's what we got to learn how to do is to put that thing out of mind. I know how bad we feel about ourselves sometimes. I mean, I know. I remember, you know, I'm the kind of person, I, I figured it out that the older you get, that uh, comfort is more important to you than appearance. <laughs> Convenience is more important. <laughs> and, and you know what happens uh, we can lose our filters. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Losing your grace filters. To where you just go ahead and spout off and say a bunch of stuff and you have to repent of it later. And then, does anybody know what I'm talking about right here? Brother, I'm telling you, I, never mind how bad you feel. Admit it, quit it, forget it. Because if you confess it and forsake it, uh, you, you receive mercy from God. And I want to tell you, coming clean with God is you've got to learn the power of the blood. You've got to learn to walk the Calvary road. So once you admit your sin, then you need to launch right into the gratitude protocol. I mean, just launch right into it. And never mind how, you, how you're feeling. How you're feeling ain't got nothing to do with it. You know, I used to have to plug in a court tape, tape to get spiritual. I found out that I was just, I was just a, I was living out of my emotions instead of out of my will. Anybody know what I'm talking about right here? I want to tell you something. There's more to, more to walking with God than goosebumps. goosebumps. Give me a Carolina amen on that one. That's right. I mean, I'm, I'm telling you the truth here. Now, here's the application of the cleansing protocol. Who will ascend in the hill of the Lord? Who will stand in His holy presence? He that has clean hands. That's actions, right? A pure, and, a, and a pure heart. That's, that's heart purity. It's talking about motives. It's talking about our, our attitudes. So, if we want to approach God, Brother, we've got to get our hands clean. Right. We've got to get our hearts pure. How do you do that? By coming to the Lord, admitting our sin, quitting our sin, and forgetting about our sin, and launching right into gratitude. So here's what we're going to do tonight. If there's anything clouding your conscience, is there anything bothering you tonight? If there's anything between your soul and the Savior, then let's put it under the blood right now. Don't ask God to help you do better next time. Ask God to forgive you for the last time. Just, just admit it. Just, Lord, I've done this. I've thought that. I've said this. I've been, and, and just admit it. And then, Lord, then go on and thank you, God, for cleansing me. Thank you for forgiving me. So if you're able, if you're able tonight, I want you to get on your knees. If you're not able, don't worry about it. But if you're able, I want you to get on your knees and any unconfessed sin, acknowledge it, admit it, put it up in the blood, and thank Him for forgiving you, alright? So if you're able, we're going to have the cleansing protocol practice right here. Just get on your knees for a few moments tonight and call out to the Lord.
you're guilty of unbelief and doubting God and doubting His Word and not claiming His Word. Just go ahead and cough that up. Put it under the blood. forgiveness with you which might be feared. Thank you that the blood of Jesus cleanses from all unrighteousness. Father, thank you that whoever confesses and forsakes shall have mercy. Father, thank you that if we confess our sin, you're faithful and just to forgive us and not only that, to cleanse us uh, from all unrighteousness. So Lord, we need more than forgiveness. We need cleansing. God, we need a deep level of cleansing of the blood. So Father, thank you tonight for the cleansing protocol. Thank you for the possibility of clean hands and a pure heart because of Calvary. We give you praise. We give you blessing. We give you thanks and we thank you for forgiving us of our sin. And just spend a couple of, a few moments right here thanking God for cleansing you from whatever you just confessed. Just thank him. Just thank him. Praise him. Father, we just thank you for the cleansing blood of Jesus on a moment-by-moment basis that's sufficient for you to erase your wrath and, Father, to give us your peace. We give you praise in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. The cleansing protocol. The gratitude protocol. But look at this one. The praise protocol. How do you approach God? Well, with praise, look in Psalm 100, verse 4. It says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and come into his courts with praise. Now, what is praise? It's law and honor. It's, it's paying uh, tribute. It, it, it's a claim. It's glorifying. The Bible says, oh, clap your hands, all ye people, and shout unto the God. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Listen to this quote. If a word of discouragement opens the door for the enemy, then a word of praise closes it and locks it. Now, you think about John the Baptist. John the Baptist. He was full of the Holy Ghost from the womb. What about that? I'll take a post-womb post, uh, filling, amen? But he, had, he, I, he was still with the Holy Ghost when he said his mother's womb. Now, think about this. He was in Elizabeth's womb. Mary comes in with the Son of God in her womb. And when Jesus came into proximity of John, filled with the Holy Spirit in the womb, he leapt, he leaped, he jumped, he kicked, he had a little spell in his mother's womb. And I just want to say that the presence of God calls for a little animation every now and a little, a little exhilaration, a little e excitement. I, I'm, just, I'm just here to tell you, I'm just here to tell you that the presence of God calls for, for exaltation. And it's a good thing every now and then to get lost in wonder and lost in praise. It's a good thing to be in church services sometimes when you're more aware of the presence of God than the presence of people. Amen. Now, you know what praise is? It's faith set to music. I love the revival atmosphere, brother. I love the revival atmosphere. And I'm telling you, it's good to be in town when God is. Amen. I love the prayer events. So Y'all got to come up to these, some of these prayer events. And man, it's a big time. You say, what's it all? A prayer event? Well, it's not a prayer retreat. We think we backed up long enough. It's time to go forward. So we have to pray advances. That's what we're doing. It's preaching. It's praying. It's praising. It's fellowshipping. It's worshiping. Brother, and, and, and it's good to get sometimes in a place where the cow gets out of the barn. Does anybody know what I'm talking about right there? It's just a good thing every now and then. Now, brother, um, there's no way to hold back in such an atmosphere like that. Oh, David, you know, he got so excited. He was out there dancing before the Lord and all that kind of stuff. And I know that makes... Some of y'all nervous, but I don't care. Uh, and, and sometimes, if you never get so full, you can't stand it. You're full of the wrong thing. 
had a guy come to the prairie man's. He said, Brother Errol, he said, I got so full I had to pull over on the side of the road. And he said, I told God if he didn't let it up, he said, I think I'll just explode. That's what he said. He got so full. Now, there's seasons like that. Okay? It's not always like that. But thank God for seasons like that. And it's the praise protocol. Now, you take a football game when it's 22 below zero. And then people out there pulling their shirts off, the guys, not the girls yet, but I, I'm sure that's coming. But, but, and then they paint their bodies green or cheese heads or orange and black, you know, if you're Bronco fan, whatever. And, 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 and they dye their hair to the colors and they're screaming like maniacs and it's snowing and nobody thinks it's abnormal. I mean, can you imagine? So, so surely if you're redeemed, you got something to get excited about more than a stupid football game. Yeah, I said stupid football game. I don't care nothing about this. Now listen, by him therefore let us offer uh, the sacrifice of praise to God continually. Now the sacrifice of praise is a praise offering. Now listen, continually means constantly. See as Lewis said, praise is boasting about what you enjoy. Praise is boasting about what you enjoy. And brother, when you get in this kind of a a situation and you ought to learn to give yourself in this kind of situation and not be dependent upon an external atmosphere to get you in this situation, you ought to be meeting the Lord in your private place, in your secret place every day and having a big time. I'm just telling you, you ought to be having a big time. And open your mouth in thanksgiving and praise. Now, instead of counting your bruises, try counting your blessings. Don't sit around in self-pity and mourning and you know, in your own eyeballs and feeling sorry for yourself and how you've been mistreated. Everybody's been mistreated. Everybody suffered injustice. There's anything unusual about you. <laughs> you just like the rest of us. You know what I figured out, Pastor? I figured out most people are like me. Yeah. And when I preach with my own heart, I hit 99% of the crowd every time. Because yeah. they're just like me, just as weak as I am. Now, a drop of praise is an unsuitable acknowledgement for an ocean of mercy. Peter Anderson said the best atmosphere for prayer is praise. George Mueller said that the first order of business every day for him was not to pray, not to eat, not to read his Bible, but the first order of business for him was to get his soul happy in God. And I'll tell you how you do that. Uh, it's through praise. And I want to tell you, when men cease to praise God, uh, they begin to praise one another exceedingly. Do you ever go to these meetings where they're just bragging on the dude that's going to get up and talk. I go to places they don't even know me. They've never even met me. And if you go to an educational uh, institution, they always like to introduce you as Dr. Dr. Vaughn. I'm not even a nurse's assistant. And here they are calling me Dr. Vaughn. Is it? I mean, and then I sit out there, and they have never met me, some of them, and they begin to say these lofty things, and they begin to give these adjectives and these descriptions, and I'm sitting out there thinking, wow, man, I'd like to hear this guy. I mean, who is this? And sometimes my wife is sitting there, I said, I said, listen up. You've got it a whole lot better than you ever thought. Listen to what I <laughs> But the undue praise of, 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 of God evidence is, an undue, an undue praise of men evidences a, 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 a lack of praise of God. Now listen to this. For praise will be your chief employment in heaven. Revelation is not about the end times, buddy. It's about heaven. It's about worship. Listen to this. The four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne, worship him that liveth forever and ever, and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. If praise is going to be your chief employment in heaven, you ought to make it your noblest uh, employment on earth. Yeah. We've got to learn how to praise the Lord. I, I'm enjoying your church here so much because you, you have a freedom here. Now, now listen, every worship service is choir practice for heaven, right? Amen. Now, now, if you find it difficult to praise the Lord for what's going on, praise Him for what is yet to be. Yeah. We had a friend of ours we've been praying for. She got cancer a year ago. Came to the prayer bench. She went home and found out she had cancer. She graduated yesterday. Wow. It's a sadness. It's a sadness in this, but she ain't suffering no more. You know? Amen. And she's doing okay. So if you can't find praise God for what's going on, praise Him for what is yet to be. Listen to me. Praise God when you feel like it or praise God until you feel like it. 
Now, there's a spiritual autobiography card back there that will give you something to praise God. Now, get, pull, pick that baby up and take it home. So here, let's, let's, uh, let's go into the praise protocol. Y'all with me on this one right here? <laughs> Man, I was in the church one day, and the song leader got up, and he was low energy. <laughs> I'm talking about low <laughs> and he would carefully slowly <laughs> meticulously <clears throat> read the verse of the hymn and then he would expound the verse of the hymn and then we would sing <laughs> I mean, I'm hyper to start with. I said to my wife, I wish a church of God would invite me to come preach so at least I could get some decent music. <laughs> There's a place to praise the Lord. So here's what we're going to do. We're going we're to practice the praise protocol. You say, what are we going to do? We're going to praise the Lord. Now, 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 it says in the book of Acts, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord. They lifted up their voices to God. That means the whole crowd was praying at the same time. God can sort out all of that. So it might be a little different here. But God, I want you to stand in just a moment here. I want you to open your mouth and for 60 seconds, praise God for who He is. Not really thanking Him for what He's done, but just praising Him for who He is. It's the praise protocol. Now, prayer is verbal communication. Prayer is not thanking. You don't thank prayers. Nobody in the Bible uh, thought their prayer. They prayed their prayers. That means they opened their mouths. So I want you to stand your feet. I want you to open your mouth for 60 seconds and just pray out loud to be God praised. Just go ahead. Go ahead and practice the praise protocol. Father, praise you. of your people. God, where people are praising, you show up because you sure like it. And we're privileged to be able to give you honor. We're not ashamed to praise you, Lord. We're, we're not ashamed to lift our hearts and lift our hands. We're not ashamed to praise your name. Blessed be your name, God. You're a good God. You've been mighty good to us. You've been so merciful. We couldn't tell it like it ought to be told, but we lift up the praise for everything we know and even the stuff we don't. We praise your name. Blessed be your name. Amen. 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 You can be seated. The praise protocol. That's a fun one. Amen. I got another fun one. <laughs> the singing protocol. Psalm 100. There's a reason every church service begins with uh, singing. Why? What is the singing protocol? Look, look at what it says in Psalm 100 verse 2. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before His presence with what? Glory. With singing? Come before His presence. It's the praise protocol. That's how you approach God. It's with singing. Now, uh, there's a shout for joy. There's the voice of triumph. And when you come before His presence, that means celebration and rejoice. Psalm 95 says, Let us come before His presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise on the end. It's the singing protocol. So when the, these words, joyful noise, you know what that means? To split the ears. To split the ears. 
You know, when you get in a cleansed atmosphere where the people are washed and everybody's clean, they, they praise God with all of their heart and the volume is overwhelming. I believe that what happens in revival services, I believe that what happens in the prayer events after we get our hearts all clean, I believe in churches where we get our hearts clean, there is such an overflow of grace and blessing and praise and it's expressed in song. Everybody singing at the top of their uh, voice from the bottom of their hearts. I love to go to the student prayer events these last three years. We have a student prayer events, men's prayer events, women's prayer events. We have a couple of events. But at the student prayer, even the student prayer event, we had less people. But Brother Oldham, the volume of praise coming up from the young people out of their hearts to God is overwhelming. There's something heavenly about it. And I believe heaven's going to be a place like that. I mean, that crowd can't hardly stand in their seats but what they're falling on their faces and praising the Lamb in the midst of the throne. And this is what happens. It's this singing protocol. Now, praise is the proper response to greatness. Praise is the proper response to greatness. Now, it says in Psalm, in the Psalms 13, I think it is, let the, no, Colossians, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in Psalms, that means songs, and hymns, and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. Now, singing from your heart to the Lord. It's not a performance. It's coming out of your heart. It's going to God. It's, 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 it's the singing protocol. And I'm just telling you, a little full more praise is a whole lot better than a low energy song service. <laughs> Whether you're by yourself or with a hundred other people, I'm just telling you. Now, God has given us three things to refresh our souls. God's given us three things to refresh our souls. Um, nature, Friendship and music. Why do people go to the mountains? It refreshes them. Why do they go to the beach? It refreshes them. Friends are refreshing. Amen? Amen. Nature. Friendship. But a third thing to refresh us is music. And I'm just here today, before your devotions in the morning, brother, sister, listen to music that lifts your heart into the presence of God. You need to identify the songs that, that exalt God in your mind and in your soul. Can I just tell you something? Not everybody likes the same kind of music. Right. Heard a little bluegrass going on up here tonight, you know? And, 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 and that lifts some people's hearts into the presence of God. Some people like that yodeling. You know how they say that. The opera and stuff. Man, if they get a blessing out of that, more power to them. That's all I got to say. Just, just more power to them. But some people like that, you know? Some people like the Southern Gospel. Some people like the High Church. Some people like the Brooklyn Tabernacle, uh, a multicultural praise, whatever floats your boat, boat, brother, collect yourself some music like that, and, and in the morning before you try to read your Bible and pray, just get a little singing going on out of your heart and magnify God. It's all right to have a good time in the prayer. In fact, I think we ought to praise the Lord publicly, uh, just like we praise God privately. And if we're praising God in private, we can praise God in public. But if you put it on in public and you ain't got nothing going on in private, you just need to be quiet and sensitive. <laughs> Am I right or wrong? So what, what I'm telling you is this. Go with the song that liberates your soul and brings you into the presence of God is the singing protocol. Man, there's certain songs every time I listen to them, I start weeping. I just keep helping. I, I just keep helping. <laughs> and you know, I've identified the things that bless me and, and what blesses me might not bless you and vice versa. Who cares? Just so it's, it's accurate and it's bringing praise and glory to God and, 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 and it's lifting your heart into the presence of the Lord. Come before His presence with singing. So let's practice the singing protocol. Listening, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Let's, let's stand tonight and sing that. And then when we get to the chorus, let's just do that praise God part with the same tune. Y'all know what I'm talking about? All right, somebody that can sing. Go ahead and get some right now. Amazing grace. Verse and verse third. Let's sing. Amazing grace, sweet sound Let's see. Praise God. Praise God. 
the faith protocol. How do you enter the presence of God? Well, you can't please God without faith. If you're going to come to Him, you've got to believe that He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. I'm calling it the faith protocol. You know, faith makes giants look like grasshoppers. Faith makes giants look like grasshoppers, but unbelief makes grasshoppers look like giants. We've got to get in an attitude of faith. And I, I want to listen, I, this is exciting. Nothing is impossible with God. Amen. That's what the Bible says. Nothing is impossible. Now, he that comes must believe that he's a rewarder. It's the faith protocol. So you can't approach God apart from faith. You can't get saved without faith. You can't please God without faith. The just shall live by faith. Unbelief always considers it too soon or too late for God to work. Unbelief always considers it too soon or too late for God to work. But faith expects God to work. Now, and I'm just, I'm just telling you, we've got to pray with exclamation points instead of question marks. We've got to learn to believe God for what we're asking for. Now, here's a quote. Man's extremity is God's opportunity. Man's extremity is God's opportunity, and the sphere in which God does His greatest works is the sphere where no one but God can work. God loves with a great love the man who has a heart and a passion for the impossible, the faith protocol. God's greatest pleasure is to be believed. I believe that. His greatest grief is to be doubted. Mm -hmm. So if it's worth praying about, it's worth believing about. Mm -hmm. Brother, if it's worth praying, it's worth believing. I'm just telling you, you always pray in faith. Now, we had a fellow got the prayer dance, a pastor up in Floyd, Virginia. He got up after the prayer, prayer dance on Sunday morning, told his people, he said, I'm asking God to send in the funds to do the heating and air conditioning in our new building. And he said, I'm asking God to send it in from the outside. He said, now some of you can write a check. He said, I don't want your check. I want God to answer this prayer and get the glory. And I'm asking God to send in the funds for the heating and air conditioning from the outside. He came and they just got him set there. Well, he came back to church that night with a check in his pocket from somebody outside the church with the amount, total amount for the heating and air conditioning. Nothing is impossible with God. Amen. We have a lady come to our prayer to answer. Her name is Mama Carter. She's a black, she's a black woman from Philadelphia. She's my adopted mother. My mother's gone, so I had to Go out and round me up another one. And she's in <laughs> Mama Carter. She needed a kidney <coughs> transplant. But the doctors in Philadelphia said, you're too old. So they wouldn't do it. She comes down to Fredericksburg to live with her daughter. <coughs> Found a doctor that said, find a kidney and I'll, I'll, I'll do the operation. So the daughter, we, we pray in possible prayer requests. Impossible, not probable, not like impossible prayer requests. So we challenge people to pray in faith for something that's humanly impossible. So the daughter's impossible prayer request was that God would supply a kidney for her mother without killing somebody. So where do you go looking for a kidney? Planned Parenthood, Craigslist. I mean, what are you going to do? I mean, I'm saying she was praying. And would you believe when they went home from the prayer events, two white women came up and said, we just feel like God wants us to volunteer one of our kidneys if they're a match. And two, two people. And the first one was a match. So the doctor in Richmond swapped them out, you know, got that thing sorted out. They come back to prayer events the next year, so we had to get up there. Mom McCarthy was right here, the daughter was right here, and the daughter was up here telling the story. Nothing is impossible with me. Amen. We were in uh, uh, Dan Valello, having a prayer summit, having a prayer summit. Went out to be Hodgins. The best Italian restaurant on the planet in Champaign, Illinois. We were sitting there having a, having a great time until the pastor began to rehearse his episode with a kidney stone. How many know that some things are not appropriate to talk about when you have marinara sauce? <laughs> <laughs> so he's telling this story. <laughs> we walk outside the restaurant to get and the pastor doubles over in writing pain. <laughs> and and the, his wife and my wife are already in the car. So we finally, I managed to get in behind the car. And my wife looked back and said, uh, uh, your husband looks like he's really sick. And his wife didn't even look. He'll be all right. <laughs> Don't do that. And, I, and, and my wife said, no, I think he's really sick. <laughs> We just had another kidney stone today. 
So we put him in the passenger seat. I sped over to the hospital, got him checked in. <coughs> they said, now, it'll be 48 hours before he gets out of here. It'll take some time for the thing to pass and to recover, and don't expect it back at church. Well, this is Friday, uh, Saturday night. So I got up Saturday night, and I said, uh, Pastor's in the hospital with a kidney stone attack. They said, he'll never be here for these services. I said, why don't we pray the prayer of faith and ask God that he'll pass the thing and everything will get cool, and he'll be here in the morning for Sunday school. They said, Amen. We prayed the prayer. Brother, next morning, 1 o'clock in the morning, he was out, he was discharged from the hospital, got home, got a good night's rest, got dressed up, showed up in Sunday school the next morning, got up in the pulpit, and nothing is impossible with God. Amen. Our middle son, his wife, was um, pregnant, and they went to the doctor to get an ultrasound, you know, that picture thing, and, and, uh, and the doctor says, uh, well, there's a sack in there, but there's, there's no baby in it, and, um, and it's Friday, so why don't we just wait till Monday and just rest over the weekend? And so my wife and I heard about this, so we speed on over there, <laughs> and we lay hands on her, and we just ask God to do something supernatural. Yes. Went in on Monday, did another ultrasound just to be sure, and the nurse comes out and tells the doctor there's a baby in there. <laughs> and the doctor said, "You just misread the uh, the, uh, the uh, ultrasound." And the nurse rebuked him. She said, "I've been doing this for thirty years, and I'm telling you, there was no baby in there on Friday, but there's a baby in there right now." <laughs> so we got a little girl called Hope. Out of this situation. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is impossible. Well, I, mean, this is I mean, other faith can do anything, anything God can. I'm just telling you. I was at a revival meeting one time in Chandler, Illinois, when, when God came. We had to, we postponed that while we postponed three meetings. We were stuck out there for about two weeks, oh, night after night, having meetings. In the church, there was an older woman. Well, there was a woman who had prayed for her husband for 30 years. And he had issues. He was manic depressive. He was, uh, what do you call it, bipolar and antisocial and couldn't go in public and couldn't hold a job. And he slapped him with all these labels and he lived up there with one of them. She prayed for 30 years. Well, I'm telling you, revival is a super sanctified situation. And brother, things happen in that kind of environment that don't happen in the normal circumstances. I'm just telling you, that's just the way it is. He showed up one night, the second week. He showed up, sitting back there with the coveralls on. You could look at him and say, there's some issues here. But he came and he sat for like two hours. He came the second night, third night, fourth night, fifth night, I think it was. He got born again. Amen. The next night, here's a guy that can't go to the store, can't go in public, can't hold a job, can't be around crowds. Uh, he's up before that whole crowd telling how God has redeemed him and saved him. Amen. You know what I think? Jesus was passing by and he just happened to be in the right place. Right. Right. Yeah. And I told my wife, I said, I wish I could bottle up this atmosphere. I wish I could bottle up this Holy Ghost atmosphere <laughs> and just throw it on people. <laughs> because, because, because uh, 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 brother, I'm just telling you, a revival atmosphere is a healing atmosphere. Right. And there's a pile of people that's got real issues. But listen, they got real issues, okay? I'm not belittling their issues. I'm telling you they're real issues. But I believe that if some of these folks could get in that kind of a sanctified atmosphere, then brother, some of them would experience substantial healing. Now in this life, we've got total healing coming in the next one. But buddy, there can be, there can be substantial healing in this life. You know he's been in church every service ever since he got saved, except for the days he was sick. He's working in the Awana program. He a hundred percent. But he's 100% better than he was. And I was here to tell you about it. Uh, that it, it. It's the faith protocol. It's the faith protocol. Now what do you need from God tonight? I mean, what is it you need from God tonight? The prayer of faith will save the sick. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. God normally answers us according to our expectations. Prayer is expectation. Prayer is anticipation. Brother, it's believing for manifestation. It's implementation. It's adaptation. But it's believing uh, for what we can't even see. And, and, and brother, I'm just telling you, uh, it's the faith protocol. So we all have meetings here tonight. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to come up with an impossible prayer request. <laughs> I mean, not a difficult one. Let's go, let's go, let's shoot the moon. Let's go for the impossible prayer request. What do you need tonight that you can't do, you couldn't conjure it up, you can't make it happen? Uh, there ain't no way in the world. 
uh, that you or a pastor or nobody else could, uh, could bring this to pass, but nothing is impossible with God. Well, if I don't do anything else in my life, I hope I, I stir up people to believe God for something big. I hope I, I stir up people to just get out of the boat and believe God for something bigger than what we've ever seen. Some of us have prodigals in our family. They, they, need, they need the touch of God. Some of us are married to people that need a touch from God. we got some children or grandchildren. Maybe there's nothing lost their way and going off into some. Hey, nothing's impossible with God. Some of us got some physical things going on. Some of us got cancer in our body right now. I want to tell you, it ain't over till it's over. And I'm, I'm just here to tell you, whatever your situation is, some of us have emotional issues. Okay, can I say that in the church? Can I say that in the church? Paul got depressed. John the Baptist got depressed. He wanted to die. Uh, Elijah wanted to die. And these were the best of the best. So, so if you're having struggles with emotional issues, you are not alone. People in the Word of God have problems as well. But God can help us with our problems. Hey, now, are you with me on this part? Amen. Some of these hard cases. Some of these people are just as tough as nails. In bondage to all kinds of mess and and, and, and most of us know what it is to wear some chains. And, 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 and God wants to liberate us and, and bring us under the faith protocol. Let's believe God tonight. we got some lost relatives. Let's believe God tonight. Let, let's cry out to God tonight. Let's exercise faith tonight. Let's pray in faith tonight. Let's ask God to come and tell Him we, that we believe Him. We're trusting Him. We're asking Him. And we're thanking Him in advance for doing some miracles. Okay, let's, let's exercise faith tonight. Amen. How many have a, have a faith burden? Have something that only God can do. Put your hands up. you got something like that. All right, I want us all to pray tonight. So the altars are open. Stand to your feet. Let's just uh, call out to the Lord tonight. If there's a piano player that can just maybe, maybe just kind of softly do that, that would be great. If not, that's okay too. But let's bring our impossible request to the Lord and let's exercise some faith. Let's pray one for another. You need somebody to pray with you to pray over you, to pray for you. Uh, hey, let's huddle around. Y'all know each other here better than me. So you know some people is going through some stuff and maybe you feel would feel impressed to come and pray with them and for them and over them. Father, would you lead us to pray tonight? Father, thank you that faith pleases God. And God, it honors God and, and you honor faith. So Lord, tonight, lift, lift, lift our hearts, God, above the horizons to believe for these difficult things, these impossible things. I pray for somebody that's depressed. God, I pray you lift them out of the pit. God, I pray for somebody that's struggling with anxiety. God, that you would help them. I pray for somebody that's addicted. God, you'd help them. I pray for some that's in a, in a divided home. God, that, that you would give a miracle of salvation and restoration. God, I pray for relationships to be uh, healed. Father, for hearts to be mended and broken hearts to be made. Lord, we're just thanking you by faith for these requests. Now, lead us as we pray.